having looked at innovation and how that works at different levels. Now, within the organization, we look at leadership and the impact it has on the way the DIG business model, the discovery, innovation, growth business model can be enacted and how we can generate momentum for growth. It's an ugly word, ambidexterity. If you've done any business studies, you might have come across it. And I sometimes like using ugly words like that because they stick in your brain and you remember the concepts. Let's see what it means. That is very basic in common language. Ambidextrous means both left-handed and right-handed. So in management sense, what does that mean? It talks about different approaches. For example, exploration and exploitation. These are very different activities. Exploration is about yeah, discovery, going and looking for things that maybe you don't know will be there, like mineral explorations, for example. And exploitation then is taking advantage of what you've discovered, implementing and acting the, uh, the discoveries and reaping the rewards. Other words that we've seen that I've used in previous modules is conception and execution, design and execution. So some people are very good at the exploration, the conception, the research, designing things. Some are particularly good at the other side, execution, exploitation. What we want in the leadership to generate momentum for growth is ambidextrous leaders. People who can do both, or at least are knowledgeable of the two approaches and know that they are important. And so they can get help if they aren't necessarily good at it themselves. Basically, it's both thinking and doing another way of looking at it. Here are some uh, examples of literature in the field that looks at you know, some type of ambidexterity. There's been quite a bit in the business model literature, as you can see, those articles highlighted in the, the gold. I'm particularly interested in that because my thesis, my research is in business models, but this is what we're doing now in this, in this program, developing a new business model for growth. An interesting one here is uh, this paper, this article by Market is a very important management scholar talking about the search for ambidextrous professors. What's the ambidextrous professor? Well, it's a professor that can both think in theory, develop models, but also be useful to management, be useful to practitioners. Now, how do we implement, say, the ambidextrous approach? There can be different ways of dealing with separate business models. Uh, so, for example, some of those articles that are highlighted around the business model innovation looked at cases where firms were trying to bring two different business models within themselves. For example, a oh, big case that marketers wrote about was Nestle. How is it possible to have both Nespresso and instant coffee in the same company? Well, there can be different approaches. One is separation, separating these different units. And another one is integration. Let's see. You can separate by time and by location. For example, beginning in one area and then over time developing, moving into the different type of business. Or you can separate them by location, put them in very different places. Maybe effectively what Nestle did was run Nespresso and the Instant Coffee as two separate companies. Okay. Now this allows specialization in what the particular units are good at and the business models they're good at. It can bring out a comparative advantage in various activities. So one type of business might be particularly good in one particular approach and the other one is relatively good elsewhere. The law of comparative advantage. On the other hand, the integration approach can be useful where closeness can support knowledge and sharing and creation of synergies across units. For that to work, however, leadership must set the context, must give strong direction and explain what you're trying to do. What is the strategic intent? And that happens through values, through the culture. Now you can have a culture of sharing, a culture of integrating knowledge. It depends crucially on the architecture. 
we'll talk about architecture a bit more in another module, but here what that means basically is the configuration of relationships, the design, the interaction of relationships inside and outside the firm, formal and informal, and of course the leadership is important, and how do you do that? You must walk the talk. If you say one thing and you do something different, the organisation will see that the people below you who are implementing what your strategy is will pay attention to that. You might lose credibility. Most important, if you behave wrongly, so to speak, and it does, and it's not consistent with the words, then the organisation will do the same, will enact the same behaviours. So, the tone is set at the top, and a very popular saying that is used a lot in business and in governance is. The fish rots from the head. If the leadership, the, the CEO or the board of directors set the wrong tone, then it flows through to the organization. It has to. So leadership, very, very important.